Hello, Curious, and welcome back. The CBS interview with Meghan and Harry is still the hottest topic in the world's press, not only because of the things that they had said, though these are big and important part of it, but also because it started many other discussions with regards to the royal family. And the biggest thing that everyone wants to know is who is the member of the royal family that was discussing Archie's skin color before he was even born. Right away, many theories were put forward, but it seems that the one that many people agreed on is Prince Charles. What made them come to this almost Almost unanimous conclusion. Has the prince done anything in the past that might have suggested it could be him? Who stood in his defense? And what did William have to say against the racism accusations? Stay with us until the very end to find out all the latest news. But before we continue, don't forget to turn on the notifications and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our future videos. As soon as Meghan had said in the interview that members of the royal family had been discussing what the skin color of her son would be, it was as if the internet exploded. Everyone wanted to know who it was. At first, everyone's mind went to the Duke of Edinburgh, who is known for some of his controversial statements. And for a while, it was as if the internet was in agreement. But then Oprah had revealed that off-camera, Prince Harry had spoken to her and wanted her to let people know that the royals in question were not his grandparents. So, this has ruled out Prince Philip. Prince Harry had revealed that they would not be naming the royal, and with Meghan adding that it would be very damaging to the crown, and it got people wondering. And since Oprah had revealed that it was not his grandparents, many are now thinking that it might have been in reference to either his father or brother, or as both are in the line of succession and therefore crucial heirs to the throne. If you want to know what else was said in the interview, you can do so by clicking on the link above, but for now, stay with us to find out more interesting news. There had been several members from the royal family who in the past had come under fire for racist comments or behavior. It seems that it might have not been the case as much for Prince Charles, and there were of course a few instances which we will talk about in a moment, so make sure you stay with us. Yet it seems that, according to some people on social media, they have decided to blame Harry's father for these comments. But what has he done in the past that some are now bringing up? One of those incidents that people are talking about occurred in 2018 at the Commonwealth People's Forum. It was there that he had spoken with a British journalist, Anita Sethi, who wasn't impressed by his comments about her. And in an open letter she had written to The Guardian, she talked about what happened, explaining that she was holding a book in which her essay had been published, which was about the remembrance of one's ancestors, and had told the prince that her mother came from Guiana. To this, in return, she was asked where she was from upon saying Manchester, England, and the prince allegedly had said, well, you don't look like it. Anita had explained that she was stunned by his reply and the fact that he laughed after it before being ushered to the next person. In the letter, Sethi wrote that the mooted next leader of an organization that represents one-third of the people on the planet commented that I, a brown woman, did not look as if I was from a city in the UK is shocking. She followed this up with the remark that Charles's succession should be skipped and passed on to the next younger generation. And that would mean William, who himself has spoken out and will talk about later, so make sure you stay with us until the very end. The internet users had also brought up a clip from 2017 that had featured both Charles and Camilla as they had arrived in Canada for a royal visit that marked the country's 150 years of independence. The footage that had caused some amount of controversy even back then showed the couple as they watched two young throat singers perform a traditional piece of music that is important to the Inuit people. The reason for the outcry at the prince's and duchess's behavior was the fact that they had both struggled to maintain their composure and started laughing in the middle of the performance. While in reality, we can't be sure whether the performance is what the two were laughing at or if it had been something that had happened off screen, people assume it was the singers that made them react that way, and many had taken it as a sign of disrespect for the culture. But some internet users had come to the couple's defense, and at the time it pointed out that the singing is a competition and whoever laughs or runs out of breath loses. They had also added that it's common for a performance to be done for visiting dignitaries and special occasions, and people always laugh. If it wasn't okay to laugh, then they wouldn't keep doing it. And while some people on social media have brought these two events back up to use as proof that uh, we highlight here in their opinion it was Charles that was concerned about his grandson's skin color, they continue to slam him for doing his royal duties. The official Clarence House Instagram account has shared a few photos on Tuesday that had shown the Prince of Wales visiting a place called Jesus House, which is to serve as a new vaccination site in London. Photographs show the Prince talking about how both staff and visitors who are black, and right away certain internet users had accused 
accused the palace of doing this on purpose as a way to ease down the accusations of racism. However, according to TMZ, a Buckingham Palace spokesperson is denying that the visit had the intent that it was scheduled to visit over a week ago. But others are also coming to Charles's defense with the accusations of him being racist. Members of the Kingdom's choir, who had performed at Meghan and Harry's wedding, are speaking up in defense of the Prince of Wales. Karen Gibson, who was the founder and conductor of the choir, spoke with TMZ and revealed that it was Charles who invited the group to bless the congregation during the wedding, and one that she believes to have been sincere. Gibson also added that the heir to the British throne had gone out of his way to congratulate them on their success since the event. While there is a divide in opinions with regards to Meghan's statements and the blame being pointed at her father-in-law, others had also stepped forward to express their support for him. The author of an opinion piece written in the National Post in defense of the monarch had pointed out that he failed to believe that a man who walked Meghan down the last part of the aisle after her own father had bowed out, as he claimed, didn't want to cause his daughter any further embarrassment. The author also pointed out that after the ceremony, he was the one who escorted Markle's mother out of St. George's Chapel and that he failed to believe that the man in question was racist. Prince William himself had responded to the accusations of racism. The remarks were recorded and posted on social media by a royal correspondent for the Daily Express. Speaking about the accusations that had been flying around his family, he said that they were, and we quote, very much not a racist family. And the Duke of Cambridge, who is second in line for the British throne, mentioned that he has not spoken with his younger brother since the interview had aired, but added that he will do so. His father is yet to comment on the situation, though whether he will is unknown, but when asked about his thoughts at the interview, he only chuckled and continued laughing. It also seems that some had decided that the earrings that Kate Middleton was seen wearing could have been a dig at Markle. Now, if you're thinking about how can that be, well, we're going to explain that to you now. On International Women's Day, Kensington Palace had shared a clip in which the Duchess of Cambridge interviewed rower Jasmine Harrison. And while many most likely took interest in the conversation, other had their attention focused on Kate's earrings, which were from Misoma, which allegedly also happens to be Meghan's favorite jewelry brand. And compared to their, uh, how the media had always made it seem like as if the two women didn't like each other, many took Middleton's accessory as they are either way aware to shade in her sister-in-law or even a sign of support. Given that Marco had denied that she made her cry and that the media twisted it all, and if you want to know what allegedly had happened, you can do so by clicking on the link above. Though while the whole debate and pointing of fingers stemmed from the part of the interview where Meghan stated that Harry had relayed her the discussion about her son's skin color and adding that it was around the time that the two of them had out their son and would not have a royal title and would not have security, the two things might not necessarily be linked together. Royal expert Craig Prescott had spoken exclusively with Us Weekly and had revealed that Archie's lack of title is both normal and unrelated to his security restrictions. He had revealed that Meghan's concerns about her son's lack of title compared him to that of his cousins, the children of Prince William, were due to protocol and not any personal feelings. As an example, he pointed out that while Harry's cousins, Princess Beatrice and Eugenie, have titles, they lack protection by personal security, adding that they don't do public duties and don't get security as a rule. He also further pointed out that Princess Anne's grandchildren also don't carry out royal titles. The expert stated that the reason for the lack of the title is that he is too far removed from the line of succession, explaining how the protocol works further and he said that the great-grandchildren don't generally get titles when they're born and the reason is the Queen had made them an exception for the Cambridge children and it is their father that is said to be King one day. And as a fun historical fact, he added that when King George V created the rules that are currently in place that he didn't think too much about great-grandchildren because people didn't live that long in 1917. And so curious, what are your thoughts on the accusations of racism against the royal family? Are these attacks against Prince Charles' name justified? Do you think the fact that Archie doesn't have a title has nothing to do with any personal feelings people might have had towards Meghan? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time!